are the chapter tasks for August and September. Most chapters essentially start their program year by following a school schedule. So August and September is a really busy time. Now one of the first tasks that a chapter needs to take care of is debriefing of all of the delegations, the delegates, their families, and their leaders. So what, what goes into a debriefing? So different chapters uh, do different things for debriefing. And so I can only speak to my experience with a debrief. And um, this was over several years uh, that one of the chapters kind of refined how to make the debrief the most effective use of time. And uh, especially since you're getting all the families there um, to interview the kids, uh, the delegates after they've returned home, and you're interviewing the parents as to their children's experiences, how, how they've related to them and with their experiences when their children were gone. Also, you're debriefing the leaders. Um, and so with that, there's what this chapter does since they send lots of delegations out is they break it down into delegations and they'll have the village, not even individual delegations, but programs. So they'll have the village parents and the village leaders and the village delegates all get together and there's specific questions that are asked. It's a regular debrief, just like CISV debriefs all of their uh, uh, programs. Um, and typically during that time, since you have all the families there, um, we, we've used it for other purposes as well, including br having breakout sessions afterwards um, for for the program planner for the summer program coming up to get volunteers. We have a volunteer coordinator. We have um, fundraising. So after you've done the debrief, the parents then go into another session and talk about something else. So they're included in the upcoming chapter events for the rest of the uh, rest of the year. Is there a difference between debriefing and evaluating? Oh, that's a really good question. We do focus on evaluating the program more than debriefing, especially with the parents, because we want to make next year's programming better. So we're always trying to evaluate and change for the better whatever issues come up with if five parents of the 12 village delegates all have the same issue, we want to make sure we address it so that we can change it and make it better for next year's programming. So it is, I guess, more of an evaluation than a debrief, even though it's called a debrief. Well, and I wouldn't even use either debrief or evaluate. I would just say we're looking for feedback on our programs, and we're looking for feedback on the chapter's recruiting and selection, and the feedback on how the preparation for the program went. Um, and once we get that feedback, it's really important important to compile your notes from your debrief or evaluation and to provide that to the volunteers who are going to be taking over the next year because we want to continue to improve our programs and our selection process, our recruitment process. So we've brought up the idea of debriefing and I want to make sure that everyone knows that there are debriefing guides on CISV Central, and they're even broken down for debriefing of leaders, for parents, for delegates, for delegates of different kinds of programs, and they have questions, they have a guide for how to get people to speak, and how to keep things under control. Because the goal here for the children is to get a real debrief. How did this experience make them feel? How have they grown as a result of this experience? How do they think they might apply it in their life? The true CISV experience for the kids who participated. And it's a diff very different thing to talk to the parents. They didn't have this experience, but they did have an experience. And they will want to express things of how things worked well, what things they would like to see us continue to do, what things maybe didn't work so well, and how we could improve upon them. And that's really what we get want to get from them and from the leaders. Sometimes the leaders have some really good input on how they might have liked to be trained differently, what, what tools would have been more helpful than ones they had. But we also want to know what tools they've got that have been terrific and absolutely what they needed. And we all learned from that experience. 
So the debriefing is best to be done before kids get busy in school, because once school gets going, it's very hard to get families and kids available to do this. And it's really important for everybody to be involved. Um, Another thing to do in August, September is to start thinking about program planning. If you're hosting a program in the summer, the um, you have to pick out a planner, the planner gets trained in September. So that's something that needs to be um, planned in advance, you have to sign up for the training and get their airfare and all that. So you've got to really start thinking about who the planner is going to be in August or before. So in, in, in April, prior to this past summer, we will have done our charter application number one, which really says where the program is going to be and what the dates are going to be. But now in August, September, we're really getting rolling on getting the nitty gritties put together, getting the planner trained is is crucial to that event. But you have just debriefed all the families, you have a lot of excitement going on. And you want to make sure that you get as many people as possible to sign on to help with the process. They don't have to be the planner, but they could take on a role and be available when the time is needed. The other thing um, that happens at planner training is local interchange training and local leadership training. So you've got to identify who your local leadership person's going to be by then and who your um, LIC will be by then. So the local leadership trainer is really an important role in a chapter because their role is to get all of your leaders and JCs and staff ready to go to national training and they get taught a whole bunch of background and philosophy of CISV and the the beginning parts about how to be a leader and how to form a group and how to understand yourself a little better so that when you get into a group, you you are your best self. Many chapters plan out their year starting in September. And an ideal way to do that is to kick off with a chapter retreat. And that's where the chapter will determine their chapter calendar, ideally incorporating a junior branch calendar. They'll figure out their fundraising plans for the year, their communications plans for the year, their recruiting plans for the fall, And that's an ideal time also to determine who will be going to the conference in motion. We encourage chapters to send as many people as possible to the conference in motion because it's a great place to network and learn more about CISV. It also is, it helps to really get volunteers to invest in CISV and in your chapter if they're sent to the conference in motion. So what is a communications plan? Well, a communications plan could include email blasts. It could be a plan to update your website. It could be someone who's handling your social media. Um, Most chapters have a combination of those uh, types of communication, and it's really helpful to have a discussion at your chapter retreat to talk about who's going to be doing those things and how best to communicate to your chapter members. Okay, so another part another part of the communications plan is profile raising. And just kind of in a nutshell, um, one of the ways that works best for, for – prof- profile raising is really just getting out there and letting people know who you are and increasing your visibility in the community. Uh, so you have more families coming in to volunteer, more um, kids coming in to participate in JB and to – participate in selection to go in on programs for the next program year. Um, one of the best, there's several ways to do it, but one of the best ways to do it that uh, one of the chapters has used was at the end, at the end of the program in the summer, uh, have kids write in their local newspaper, just a little short, um, a little information, you know, these four people from these different four school districts in this community went on a, on a three-week program to Austria. And just, you know, if it's written by the, by the delegate, the delegate gets a byline, it's in, a, it's in the first person, they talk about their wonderful experience, they can include a few pictures, and local newspapers and local magazines in your community are always looking for content. And when you have a 
14-year-old or a 12-year-old writing about their summer experience that's so completely different than most kids in the community's summer experience that usually lands in one of the first, you know, two or three pages of the local newspaper. And it's really amazingly great. And it's great for your chapter. Another thing that chapters like to plan at this time of year is their fundraising, setting goals for the year and coming up with ideas for what those fundraisers will be. Fundraising is a whole topic onto itself. So tune into another podcast to learn about fundraising ideas. A couple of other things to keep in mind for September is that your um, chapter roster is due. Please expect an email from the from the executive director, Laura, uh, to make sure that you get your roster in, which is just listing all the names and contact information of everybody in your leadership of your chapter. Also, your fall chapter report is due to national. This is very important, and it's very simple. Um, and you'll get a reminder on that too, but that's very important. It's a one-pager. You just fill it out online, click submit, and it's done.